All right, hello everybody. Um, this is an additional training video for everyone interested in uploading photos to Wildlife Insights. This training is going to go into how to actually look through and tag the animals in the photos. Um, we did not do much of that uh, during the training video that you um, may have looked at or during the actual online training. And so we're gonna take a little bit more of a deeper dive into how to tag the animals within the actual photos and how to work with the sequencing of the photos and all of that good stuff. Um, so we're going to take a little bit more of a deeper dive into that during this video, but I also wanted to show you a few features that you can access as well as a contributor to this project. Um, so the first major thing is that when you first log in, you will be taken to this main screen right here, and it will show you all of the projects that you are a part of. Um, and so in this case, you are part of the Wasatch Wildlife Watch project, and specifically you are part of the WWW community science effort. Um, and so if you wanted to, you could actually go into this and take some, uh, you know, take a gander at some of the images that we're uploading, look at some of the stats from the projects that's already been uploaded. Uh, you can take a look at what animals have been spotted. So just some information for you as you're going through this. You can also take a deeper dive into some of the details of the project. Uh, you can take a look at you know some of the locations and deployments that we've created um, and then you can also once we have enough data check on some of the analysis that's performed automatically within the program but most importantly you can also identify photos um, and so wildlife insights works on kind of a group identification process where if someone happened to uh, upload photographs that hadn't been identified yet they would show up right here in this program um, and you could identify the photos from someone else's camera, or let's say you wanted to specifically upload the photos from your own camera, you could go down and select camera deployments and select your camera of interest. In this case, I went ahead and uploaded some photos to my pro uh, program so that we could work with them, and I did photos from PC30. If you remember from the other video to upload photos, you click on this upload button, you navigate to where the photos are in your actual computer, you select all the photos that you want to upload, and you would click this upload button. You would then select the camera deployment that you're uploading to, and you would click this upload button, wait for the progress bar to go, and then once it's complete, you're then done and ready to go. In this case, I've already done that, so let's go ahead and cancel, and I've brought in all the photos in here. And so now you can see there's 493 photos that we need to identify. All of them are listed here. We could, if we wanted to, sequentially go through each individual photo. And to do that, all you have to do is start on one of them. You just have to click on one. And let's say, okay, we want to identify um, what animals in this photo. Well, I don't know if you can see it right here, but in this bottom right corner of the screen, the bounding box, the artificial intelligence actually caught an animal, but it didn't know what it was. So it's basically saying there's no animal uh, that we can report here. We're not entirely sure what it is but we found something. And so you can, uh, of course, always say, good job, bounding box, you found what you were looking for. Um, but then you have to go in and actually edit the classification. And these are the antlers of a mule deer. If you didn't know that, that's totally okay. You could have totally left this one blank and moved on to the next photo. If you happen to know um, with 100% certainty that these are the antlers of a mule deer, you could go in here, select mule deer. If there's more than one, you could change the count. If there happens to be a juvenile, you could have changed um, the age right here, adult, juvenile, unknown. But in this case, it looks like it's just a one male adult um, mule deer. So we're gonna go ahead, mark those changes and save it. It'll then take you to the next photo where this time the computer program actually got it correct, where it said, uh, we think that this is a mule deer with 90% confidence. And so in this case, you could say, okay, good job. You did the bounding box. You don't have to select whether or not the bounding box was correct over the animal. If you hover over this question mark, you can see that it's actually just for the program's sake. It helps to improve the accuracy of the program. So if you want to select that, you can. If not, you don't have to. Um, and you can even turn it off if it bugs you. You can turn it off right here if you don't want to see bounding boxes. But in this case, we're going to keep it on and we're going to say, good job, you found it. And since it got it correct, we're actually going to accept its classification. That then moves us, like I said, to the next photo where once, you, once again, it correctly identified it, it found what we were looking for, and boom. 
All right, so now we're at a different sequence. So you've noticed that those three photos were very similar and that's because the camera takes photos in bursts. And so we've set all of our cameras to, for when it's triggered to take three photos each time it's triggered. And so that's exactly what's going on right here. Um, and so now we've gone through that first sequence and now we have another sequence. And so once again, we could just move through this like we uh, have been and it probably is the easier, less finicky way to do it. It's just one photo at a time. But let's say instead we wanted to look through sequences and make our lives a little easier so that we didn't have to look through 490 individual photos all the time. If we wanted to do that, we could select the burst option right here, where we could actually look through these photos in sequences. And for ease, let's say 60 seconds. You can set your burst to be whatever you want. 15 seconds is the latency period on the camera, so that usually covers most of the burst. But let's say you wanted to go a little bit more and do 60 seconds, you could do that. You could do you know, 120 seconds. It's really up to you because you'll still be looking at the individual photos. You just have the ability to potentially identify them all as the same photo. So then let's see how that works. When we click on this sequence, we can see at the top right of the sequences, it now shows us that we have six photos to look through in this one sequence. Um, and what we can see is now that we're, we're viewing the 490 images that we uploaded within only 60 bursts. So instead of having to look at 490 photos, we just have these 60 sequences that we have to look through instead. So let's click on this first one. And what you'll see is that it's at, um, right off the bat, it's really difficult to understand what is going on here. And so it has all six of the photos right here. You can view them in either the grid size or you can view them um, in a little larger of a grid but it's still really difficult to see what's going on in each individual photo. And so, um, and then on the right here, it'll tell you how the computer program has classified each of the individual images. So you can see that in this one, it said there was no animal at all. In this one, it said it was a mammal, but it couldn't identify it. This one, it said it was a uh, Sertio Ariodactylo, which is the right um, order, but it couldn't identify it. And then this one, it said it was a mammal and it couldn't identify it. Well. Let's see if the computer is actually correct and let's see if we can identify it for them. And so to select all the photos in the sequence, you actually click on each individual one. You can do that by clicking this one right here. Or you can select them all six together. And then once you do that, you can then view them. And so right here we have this uh, individual right here. We see that there is a mule deer here, but we also see that there's another mule deer here. So then we're going to advance this sequence. All right, we still see the same two mule deer. We see that there's actually three bounding boxes, even though there's only two individuals. It gave this individual two different bounding boxes. And then we just see that the one has now passed out of the frame and only the one is remaining, but that still is the one of the same two mule deer. We see the same thing. Okay. And then the last photo in the sequence we see, okay, these are the six photos. We see that this is actually two mule deer that we found. Um, and so the classifications that the artificial intelligence gave us are not correct. And we can actually go in and fix those. So to fix those, you do have to select each individual photo and say that you are going to add a classification for all six of them. So you're saying six images selected. You're going to edit the classification. You're going to remove all of the incorrect classifications, except the last one. You're gonna select mule deer. And remember, you are now classifying for this entire sequence. And so even though three of these photos right here only had one individual in them, this entirety of what was present in the six photos together was two individual mule deer. And so you're gonna change that count to two. Once you've done that, you click the update images button you now see that it says, okay, the uh, classification is now mule deer with a count of two applied to all six images. You save that and it moves you on to the next sequence automatically. And so that's how the sequencing works. Um, like I said, you can either do the sequence option or you can choose to do the individual photo option. Both of them are valid. Some things to think about when you're doing the sequencing option. If you click the command all to highlight all of these photos, and you haven't changed the classification yet, it's actually gonna submit them as the classification that was put in here. And so if that's incorrect, it's gonna incorrectly identify those animals. 
which is why if you want to make a classification for all of them, I um, highly recommend that you individually select all of the photos in the sequence before you do that. Another thing that people will tend to do is they'll look at one of the photos from the sequence and be like, oh, that's a mule deer, but they won't look at the other photos to see if anything else is going on. And because of that, they'll just classify the sequence as the one mule deer, where who knows if you know, you're looking carefully, there might've been another one in the background here or something else going on. So make sure you take a look at all of the photos in the sequence before you make that classification. In this case, the computer program actually got it correct for all three of these images. It said there was a mule deer with this amount of confidence and it got it correct and it said it was present in all three. So in this case, we don't have to edit the classification at all. We just say apply to the three images and then we click save and next. And then it goes to the next um, sequence. An important thing to note when you're doing sequencing as well is that when you do sequencing, the sequences themselves, they don't go away after they've been identified like the, uh, they do um, when you're looking at individual photos, unless you go up here and you click the refresh button. So if you reload the page, you'll notice now that the images have gone away, so has your sequencing bursts. But if you put that back to 60, the sequences that we upload previously are now in the system. And so it is a little bit of a finicky thing. This is one of the bugs that I've um, sent into the Wildlife Insights program. And so maybe it'll be fixed uh, in that way. But if that's something and you're a neat freak like me and you want to go you know, individually through each sequence and then out and then it back in, it's gonna be kind of weird if you're like, oh, I've already looked at this sequence. If that's the case, then you don't wanna do that. You can always click the refresh button um, after you've identified a certain set of sequences. So now we have 58 uh, more photos to go through. Um, let's pick and choose some of the stuff that we can uh, look at here so that we can get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty stuff that we might see here. This one's cool. All right, so if we look at three photos from this, um, these are night vision photos. In our uh, artificial intelligence program, the computer is saying that it has no idea what this animal is. It knows there's an animal, but it has no idea what the animal is. So let's click on what it's doing. And okay, so we do see that there is an animal there and that it got it correct. So let's go ahead and say, yes, you did get it correct. Um, computer program, good job. But what we can see here is that we know what that animal is. In this case, it's a puma or a mountain lion. So if we go and we search puma, we can see there's puma species, there's catapuma, um, or there's the actual species itself. Notice right here, the differences in classifications. When you go to select puma or when you go to select a species, make sure you're under the species classification and not the genus or the family classification because uh, there are multiple species within the puma genus. And we wanna make sure we're classifying the actual puma species. So we wanna make sure we're getting within that species and going to the actual classification. So we'll select that. And what I'm gonna do here is actually just make the classification for the one photo in the sequence and show you what that does. So let's say you wanted to look through the sequences um, and you wanted to identify the photos that were in that sequence, but you went through the individual photos like this and identify them. What that does is actually only identifies the one photo in the sequence. So now if we were to exit out, Instead of having the two, it only identified the one out of those three. And so let's see if we then look at this and we're like, okay, what's going on in these other two? It's obviously the same individual mountain lion as we go between the two. So it's the same individual mountain lion. Instead of making the same classification twice, let's just select both images, go over to here, edit both of the images, go down to Puma, select the one count, update them, we now see Puma, one count, apply to both these images, save, and now we're at the next sequence. Okay, so that's what we're at. Let's go ahead now and refresh that page again. Go down to here, click on the 60 seconds to change our burst if we want to. Let's find another um, one that might be nice to look at here. Here we go, here's a human being sequence. Let's look at this human being sequence. Let's see if there's anything of interest here. So when we go down to here, we see, okay, this is a human being, but we also see they're messing with the cable, which this is gonna take some deductive reasoning on your part. But if you look at that and it sees, uh, it looks like the human being is obviously using the camera or taking down the camera or setting up the camera, 
we don't classify these as human beings um, that shouldn't be marked down as someone that's passing through the camera. These are camera trappers. And so in this case, we actually go to here, we go to add an animal. And instead of when you search human, going through all these different classifications of humans saying, well, was it a hiker? Was it a park ranger? What is a pedestrian? Or was it just a human? You didn't really know what they were doing. Um, you know, was it a hunter? What was going on? This was the person actually setting up the camera. We need to specify between camera trappers and other forms of recreation. And so in this case, we're gonna select the camera trapper and we're gonna save that. We'll also acknowledge that the photo will be deleted. And now we'll see that that photo has been uploaded. And then, so let's just now go ahead and do that for the rest of the photos in this sequence. Go here and edit it, add an animal, remove that one, go down, human camera trapper, update images, save and next. Okay. So that is the process. I'm not going to go through all 472 photos here, but if we wanted to, we totally could. I'm actually going to leave these up here in case there's someone that would like to take a look at them. Um, but that is the project. That's how this is going to work. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, yeah, and happy, happy tagging. <laughs>